Today we got an answer on how the UK government planned to change ISAs, the limits, fractional shares, all of that. The Chancellor has just completed his autumn statement and alongside that we get this document which is around 110 pages long. The Chancellor said nothing in his statement about ISAs but I've been through the document and I've found the relevant bits. I'm going to cover the rest of the statement in a separate video but considering how serious some of the rumours have been around ISAs in recent months, I wanted this to be its own standalone video. The first one people always wonder about is the subscription limit, the 20k total that you can pay into all of your ISAs each year. It's been at that level since 2017-2018 and when you consider the rate of inflation we've had in recent years, that allowance gets smaller in real terms every year. I want to point out that it is still a generous limit but in recent years it's increased every two to three years and we're probably overdue an increase now. Page 90 details all of the changes coming to ISAs and we'll go through them one by one in a second. But to start off, 5.46, the government is freezing the individual savings account, 20k, junior individual savings accounts, 9k, lifetime individual savings accounts, 4k, excluding the government bonus, and child trust funds at 9k. So they're frozen for another year, which is bad news for some, but at least any talk of capping ices at 100k total or whatever the Resolution Foundation was chatting about a while ago hasn't made an appearance here. Let's now look at the other sections on page 90 which list out the major changes and we'll go through these one by one. 5.38, allowing multiple ISA subscriptions. The government will allow multiple subscriptions to ISAs of the same type every year from April 2024. I mean, that to me sounds like they're saying we're gonna allow you to pay into different ISAs of the same type each financial year. At the moment, remember, if you pay into a stocks and shares ISA in a financial year, that's the one that you kind of have to stick with for that year. You can't pay into any others. You can still have multiple types of the same ISA. You can have multiple different stocks and shares ISAs. You can just only pick one each year. By allowing you to pay into multiple, that flexibility will be great for the consumer and hopefully will increase competition as well because you won't be locked into one provider each year. It'll also stop people being penalized by what is a pretty silly rule. From a consumer perspective, you might want the reputation of a Vanguard, say, for your big ISA, but then you might also want to dabble in individual shares with a company like Trading212 each year. I keep a list of all the brokers I use in the description of every video. These changes give you the ability then to try out platforms while still remaining tax efficient. You know, I like that. 0.5.39, allowing partial transfers between providers. Partial transfers are great. They're gonna allow you to move a portion of your ISA to a different ISA provider, so consumers have more flexibility and choice. The partial transfer point might provide some greater peace of mind for someone, say, who's built up a large pot with one provider and thinks, oh, I'd like to spread this around a bit. 5.40, removing the requirement to reapply for an existing ISA annually. The government will remove the requirement to reapply for an existing dormant ISA from April 2024. I think we'll see a tidying up of all the weird quirks of ISAs that are born out of this one per year rule. As an example, you're probably familiar with the annual tradition of signing an ISA declaration with certain brokers. I'm not sure what the classification of the word dormant is. I've never had to reapply for a previous ISA that I have funds in that have you know sat there for a year or two while I used other platforms. Maybe this applies to ones that you've opened and not deposited in, I don't know. These two points here are expanding the scope of what can be placed inside of an innovative finance ISA, which as you can see on this table from 2020, 2021, have always been the least popular of all the ISA products. These numbers are in thousands, by the way, so it's 16,000 open, not just 16. I don't think these changes will change the fact that this type of ISA are the least popular, but I guess it's just a good place for the government to park different investment classes when they come along or whatever. I mean, crypto maybe one day, who knows? Okay, the next one's the big one. 5.43, allowing certain fractional share contracts as permitted investments. The government intends to permit certain fractional share contracts as eligible ISA investments and will engage with stakeholders on the implementation. That's great news for anyone worried about fractional shares and HMRC's heavy-handed nonsense a while ago. The rules around share ownership inside of an ISA are just not fit for purpose. They were designed decades ago and HMRC's interpretation of them was very black and white. The key word here though is certain, as in we will allow some but not all. I obviously can't tell you what that means at this point, but my gut is that fractional ownership, the likes of which many brokers allow, will be fine, but the rules around it will be clear. The ownership will need to comply with CAS rules and give you access to things like dividends and all of that. The point that they will be working with key stakeholders means that they will be working with brokers to figure this out, I'm sure. 5.44, digitalize the ISA reporting system. The government is announcing the digitalization of the ISA reporting system. This is probably an example of the fact that the ISA system behind the scenes is archaic and not up to modern standards. In the same way, a lot of public sector IT infrastructure lags the modern world, doesn't it? Digitalizing it would likely make it easier to spot people who are falling foul of the rules, you know, because they can see what's going on. But also, it would be great if there was like a government gateway where I could just log on 
and see where I'm up to with my allowances across all my different ISO products in one place. So I'm not, you know, manually calculating it and going, oh, well, I've paid 4K into my lifetime ISO, so I need to only pay this amount into here. I would like to see a similar sort of setup for pensions as well, which might help us find a home for the 26.6 billion in missing pensions. Okay, so we heard about 100K limits, reducing the subscription allowance to 15K, getting rid of fractional shares and all these sorts of horror stories. And none of them have really come true. Allowances have been frozen, yes but fractional shares will probably be okay. I'll keep you updated as I hear news on that. And it looks like from April next year, we will all have lots more flexibility around the ices we can use and where we can put our money on an annual basis. I would say overall, it's been a good day for ices.